that we... Hi, I'm Dale Kislik. And I'm Colleen Kislik. This video is all about a winter camping adventure that we had where we went camping and hunting for five days and four nights in bitterly cold temperatures. Join us as we load our toboggans, set up our unique and highly specialized campfire tent, hunt for elk, shoot ruffed grouse, gather chaga, track wolves, and discover incredible wild places in Canada's wilderness. Yeah, so we got the stove going and stuff. It's 33 below tonight. Uh, outside it's 33 below on the other side of the canvas. We just got back from a walk in the moonlight uh, to a beaver lodge. And uh, we got back and it was minus 20 inside here. But it's warming up now that we got the stove going again. Uh, earlier we had it up to about plus 8, plus 10, somewhere around there. But yeah, so... I mean, it's as the, the stove goes up and down, so does the temperature inside here. So, but it was good. We're 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 tired and we're ready for some sleep for sure. So we're gonna just wrap it up for tonight. Yeah.
We have frozen peanut butter sandwiches. We have frozen peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah. Pretty much everything froze that could freeze. Good night, John Boy. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. Well, <clears throat> for breakfast this morning, we're having sausage and hash browns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we slept in. We didn't get out hunting this morning first thing because we're just kind of being lazy and enjoying ourselves. At minus 30, the, the thing with this kind of camping is there's always chores to do, right? There's always tidying to do, organizing, putting on water, putting up firewood. There's just always something going on, so it's it takes energy and stuff. It's a good thing we have food to replenish our internal furnaces. All night, uh, there was coyotes howling and or yipping, <clears throat> and we heard wolves howling too, just to the north of us a little ways. Hey, that was kind of cool. So they weren't too far away. And then this morning probably there was at the beaver dam we checked out. Probably at the beaver dam, yeah. yeah, with the wolf tracks, yeah. And then this morning something walked around our tent. We think it was a deer. Hey. All right. So we're hunting on our third day out here. Still looking for elk sign. But we have found some really beautiful places like this. Here's another uh, big beautiful beaver pond. This one's got quite a lot of water in it. It's, we're going to walk right by it here and you'll see it's, it's probably got 8 or 10 feet of water in it. And wolf tracks on top of our tracks last night. So not surprising there's lots of wolves around our area. <clears throat> it's just neat to hear them howling in the night and then see their footprints uh, the next day on top of your own footprints. Here's our wolf tracks. Good sized wolf. So yeah, it's well over our heads. The dam is right there behind us. And I'll just raise this up. And then you can start to see way in the back the beaver lodge up there. Awesome. These are the wonderful things that we discover as we're walking back here. Our clothes and our our wool clothes and the mitts and the footwear, everything has been exceptional uh, in cold temperatures, so really good. I haven't had cold feet yet. Uh, I got some cold fingers when I was cutting wood and that sort of thing a little bit and sawing, but uh, other than that, it's been pretty awesome. Pauline's new anorak parka is working out really wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, except I can't get my Thumbs fingers. up, yeah. There. She's bundled up pretty well, so. And then last night when we went out walking to the, in the moonlight to the beaver pond, that was really something. Uh, just gorgeous out there. And I, I wish that we could bottle it up and give it to everybody so you could see what it feels like to experience uh, bitter cold weather on a moonlit night in the forest when it's so quiet and uh, the shadows are cast all over and, and to walk out on the ice and climb up on a beaver lodge you know those are, are rich and rare experiences I wish we could just give it to everybody but uh, you'll have to go out and get it on your own It's minus 33. We got a full moon up there, and behind me is one of the biggest beaver lodges I've ever seen. Mm. That we've ever seen. And it's beautiful out. It's a clear, crisp night. Hard to see, but. We spent about three hours walking around this area following tracks yesterday. And now we've seen some that were made since we were here yesterday, so so that's good. That's promising. We're in a good area. So 
So we've got elk track right there. There's one toe, another toe, another toe. This one here. Oop. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger too. So there's a few. Oh, there's a good one. There's a few animals here anyway. Right there. So it's time to look with our eyes and listen with our ears. They could be uh, nearby. And here we have Father Christmas. Hey, this I'm... is where he goes when he's finished with Christmas. He <laughs> heads to the bush. Looking for elk. And chaga. And chaga. So we found a nice piece of chaga. First one on the trip. That's a beauty. And we're way back. No one comes back here. Like, I don't know why anyone would come back here other than people like us. <laughs> I'll probably harvest a good chunk of it, if not all of it. So I'll just drive my knife into the back of it here. It's going to be a good size one. It's tall. Oh, there it comes. Oh yeah, beautiful. Look that nice, rich color. It's awesome. Good piece of chaga. A good size, and we'll just leave the rest on the tree and take this one back. So that'll make a lot of pots of tea. Uh, good healthy tea, full of many antioxidants. Uh, its uh, reputation is that it's a real amazing herbal tonic for, well, a multitude of uses. <laughs> On the internet, of course, they, they tell you it'll cure everything. But uh, it's delicious, and we drink it all the time. We try to have a, at least a cup full of it every night. But uh, in any case, it's, it's living now, so now that I've taken off, it'll have to dry out. And once it's dry, you can make tea out of it. I mean, you could make tea out of it now, but um, once it's dried out, you can use it to carry fire from place to place. And you'll see that on some of my other videos where I'll transfer an ember into this. Uh, some people will drill right into it. I've had some success with that, with a bow drill. You just drill right into it to produce an ember right inside it. But, yay! At least we got something today, hunting. It's not an elk, but it's Chaga. That's a keeper. Hi, Coco. <laughs> She's smiling, I think. I am. <laughs> well, awesome. I could only guess now, but we're convinced there's at least 16 beaver dams in a row here. And, uh, there's likely many more, of course, that we haven't seen yet, uh, all through this valley. Just beautiful, gorgeous. I'm practicing being royalty and walking two steps behind you. Oh. <laughs> Not that way you fall through the ice and I don't. It sure is awesome. There was uh, five wolves that traveled along here. We're seeing their tracks. Good size, too. <laughs> All right. Still no elk, though, other than tracks. Lots of tracks. We trailed them for, well, over two days, probably, I'd say four. Maybe five hours of trailing. <laughs> we haven't seen one yet, but we know we we're close behind them. We've sure seen a lot of beautiful, beautiful country. Oh wow, look how far up there you can see. Holy man. So on this beaver lodge, 
right at the very top or you can actually see steam coming out of it. The beavers are down inside and right at the top is this little uh, frosted up spot a like a vent where they're breathing and their warm bodies inside has created this big ice thing at the top. Let's go and look up close. I can see steam coming out of it. There it is up close and the steam is coming out right out of the center right there. Uh, hello beavers down in there, can you hear us? So it's day four, we've averaged, we figure around eight or nine kilometers a day of walking, searching for elk and exploring and discovering beautiful places. Um, so it's tough finding an elk right now and some of the reasons that I think we're not having success is this. Number one, it's cold. The four days we've been out here, the warmest it got to was minus 22 Celsius. And, I mean, it's cold for the animals too, right? The open areas where we'd like to be hunting elk, uh, there's there's a little breeze and the wind chill makes it, makes it tough for us to be out in the open and the animals. So we figure like all, most of the fresh tracks we've seen have been in the bush. There, there's really little activity, very little activity out in the open areas. Uh, the lack of snow too means that there's more food available in the bush than uh, out in the open areas. If there was deep snow, uh, the elk, the deer, the moose, they'd be out in the meadows and the fields uh, pawing away at the ground trying to find food, but right now they can go anywhere in the bush and, and find uh, open ground. Any any south-facing area has open ground, so there's food available to them there. Um, so there's that. Uh, the other thing is uh, we've been trailing some elk for a few days. Uh, we spent a lot of hours trailing them, walking through the bush, following them around, and uh, it's so crunchy right now. The snow is so frozen, so loud and crunchy that with their excellent hearing, it's almost impossible for us to stock up on anything. And everything I'm sure our, our crunchy feet are announcing our presence long before we ever see anything. <laughs> the other thing that's contribut contributing to it too is everywhere that we've been walking for four days, we're coming across wolf tracks and coyote tracks. Everywhere we went to the north of our camp, there's two wolves that have been uh, scouting around there. Everywhere we go there, they seem to be there. Um, and to the south of our camp, there's a pack of five wolves. So with all the wolves in the area, all the animals are on alert, the elk, the deer, the moose, everything is probably a little wigged out because there's so many wolves right in this area. So, so whatever. Um, we're enjoying ourselves. We could elk hunt like a lot of people do, which is to drive around the countryside on the back roads, waiting to see tracks going into fields, then go and talk to landowners and uh, get permission on their land, drive out in the field and shoot elk. And that's, you know, that's how a lot of people hunt. But then we'd be missing out on all this adventure. We'd be missing out on, on exploring in all the beautiful places and the camping in the tent and and uh, just uh, the whole 
rounded experience of winter camping. So this is kind of our preferred mode of travel and, and our preferred way to hunt. Whether we're successful or not isn't the biggest issue. It's whether we've had an amazing time is more important to us. And we're certainly having that. We got uh, one more night here yet. And uh, it's actually supposed to start warming up after we leave. <laughs> okay, so we just came up on a lone cow elk all by itself. I had it in my sight, but uh, it was running away from me faster than I could have taken a shot. Uh, anyways, it's up this way. And I've got a good line of sight down this cut line. And if we're lucky, it went and hid in a, in a well, uh, like a thick spruce bush kind of coolie over there. So we'll get you to walk off over this way a few hundred yards out and just go right through the bush and you can make lots of noise. You don't have to stalk or be sneaky, just kind of trounce your way through. And I'm gonna go sit over there and then what you wanna do is go out and then angle straight and then end up way up on that hill, way back over there, as high as we can see. Because I'm hoping it'll squirt out in that little little draw, that little valley right there. And I'll be just down here and if we can squirt it out in front of me, then I might get a shot. Okay. All right. So, Colleen has uh, gone out there to the left. She's making a big sweeping arc, trying to push, hopefully, that cow elk right through this draw that you can see in the camera. And somewhere right in front of me there. And uh, if she can push it out and make it come this way, then I might get a shot. And if it's not even in there, then we get back together and we just keep walking. That's how hunting goes. If we're lucky, it'll work out. If we're not lucky, then we just keep trying somewhere else. <clears throat> well, the sun's heading down on uh, day four now. It was awesome, awesome day. We came close, we had, uh, had the gun sights on an elk today. It was exciting. And again, we saw tracks all over the place. Eh? That, uh, didn't get one, didn't shoot anything. But still, the adventure continues. And we're in this amazing place. Right now we're on this little beaver dam. Look at that guy. <sighs> Do you have anything to say? Words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's New Year's Eve. Here, I'm gonna swing the camera around. There. So that right there, you can see the full moon. It's a super moon. Tomorrow is a super moon. So it's New Year's Eve. Tomorrow is a super moon. The bush. It's supposed to start warming up to when we leave. <laughs> that figures. We just want to take this time to say Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! New Year's Eve kiss. Happy New Year! Yep, they are right there. Oh dear Lord. That one went down. Well, we got dinner. Rough close. It's a good size little grousey. So, uh, these rough grouses, there's a technique that we use around here, maybe all over the world. Um, to clean it quickly, you stand on its wings and you pull on its feet and it uh, removes all the breast meat from the uh, intestines. So, I'll just put my feet right beside its wings. Gotta get them really close like that. 
So if you don't want to watch this, if this kind of thing bothers you, then don't watch. Okay, ready? There we go. Good. So, uh, basically what happened is, it left the nice breast meat down here on the bottom with the wings attached. And the feet and the intestines came with the bottom, so a little bit on the gross side. But what was good about that is I went for a head shot and I was able to hit it in the head so didn't waste any of that really nice white meat. Alright, so there's our breast meat. I know it's getting dark, but uh, nice breast meat. That'll make some good food. Uh, if we were in a true bushcraft survival situation, then uh, I would use the intestines and the feathers to bait for other animals if I needed, if we needed more food, but we don't. Uh, we do have tags for grouse. The grouse season is still on for another few weeks, so this was a legal kill and harvesting within the laws of Alberta. And we have an elk tag, so there you go. That's it. Oh yeah. Right on, we're having rough, what are we having? <laughs> rough, <laughs> rough grouse. Couscous. Couscous. With wild mushrooms. With wild mushrooms and vegetables. Oh. So the only sad thing is that tomorrow we have to pack up and go. And this has been such an enjoyable few days. I really don't want it to kind of quit. I'd love to just keep hunting like this for like a, until we get it. <laughs> but the reality is that we have jobs to go back to. And, and kids. And kids to go back to. <laughs> well, that's it. All that's left is packing up our gear and heading on out. Yeah.